Last time we were here, we talked about how hashing can be used to guarantee the integrity of transmission packets. We talked about parity and checksums and cyclic redundancy checks. Uh, but now we've put that uh, aside, and we are now going to be talking about how hashing can be used for fast data storage and retrieval. And so this is more germane to our data structures course. So the question is, what do we need this hashing for? And we already talked about the limitations of an array. We can store information in an array fairly quickly, and we can retrieve it quickly because it provides O of K access. What are the shortcomings of storing and retrieving information in the array? Searching is slow because if we store it in a haphazard fashion, we're going to have to do a linear search to find our items. Alternatively, we could keep the array sorted, and then what would become our search speed if we kept the data sorted in the array, Ms. Mila? It would become log n, so that would be a much faster way to retrieve information. What's the downside, we said, of keeping it sorted? So the next time we have to uh, add more information, we have to keep the thing sorted, so there's going to be overhead for that. <clears throat> the fundamental issue with the array is we have a linear structure, and so in order to get around the issues with that, we said we could do better by breaking it into more of a tree structure. And we said that if we go with a binary search tree, we can get away from the idea of having to keep it sorted. And we can have log n access speeds for both insertion as well as uh, finding. So in that way, the binary search tree was an improvement over just raw storage inside of an array. Now the question is, can we do even better than O of log n? Could we get it all the way down to O of k or nearly O of k? And that is what hashing is all about. And to explain to you how this can be done, uh, I'm going to give you a couple of simple examples today. Let's look at this one. Let's say that we have uh, a familiar array right here. Here's our array. And I won't show all the elements, but let's just say that this array happens to be, have indexes from 0 to 25 and happens to be 26 elements long, and that each of these will hold a string. Let's say further that we have some strings to store, like this one, like that, right? So maybe they're pie flavors or something. And we want to store these into the array. Now before we had any kind of rhyme or reason, we would have just stored apple over here, banana over here, peach over here, like that. That would have been sequential storage there. What we want to do, and the whole idea behind hashing, is that we want to be more sophisticated in the way we choose where to store the items. We want something about the items to indicate what the index of storage should be. So one simple way we could do that, for example, is to use the first letter to generate an index and to store the words accordingly. So therefore, since apple begins with A, we can say that A will have an index of 0, and we can put that over here. B will be over here, but pecan now will not be stored in index 2. Do a quick count in your head and try and figure out where will P be, P can be stored. You're still counting with by, from 1. Uh, I was hoping I had broken you of that habit. 15, 15 right? Because no. we're going to do it from 0, right? So it's going to be, OK, so this would be stored at location 15. This would still be stored at location 1. And that would be stored at location 0. And then the next time we need to find out if P can is stored in our array or not, what we could do is do the, calculate the hash function again, take the p, convert it to a number, 15, look up at location 15, and if it's there, we know it's there, and if it's empty, we know that pcan is not in our array. Now, if we were to use this scheme, and I realize already in your head there are all kinds of issues, like what if we have more than 25 words, and th there are a lot of other issues here as well, and we're going to go through those today. But right now, I want you to try and calculate with me what would be the insertion and deletion and search times if we were to use a scheme like this. So it'll take some time for us to calculate to translate the first letter into a number. 
You agree with that, right? But it's a fixed amount of time. And then we would just take the number, and then we would store it at that location. And since the array provides us random access, it's going to be O of k for storage. What about for a retrieval, sir, to find it? Also O of k, we do the same thing. So you can see that the operations would all turn into O of k.